This is The Story Place. Short stories written and read by Ken Downing. Today's story, The Sandman. Give me your gun, Fata demanded. The wounded deputy sheriff was reluctant to hand over her service weapon, but knew she wasn't in any shape to use it herself. She also knew that Fata had been a detective on the Boulder Police Force till about a month ago. She wasn't sure how the woman had lost her gold shield, but assumed that if it were something truly criminal, she would have heard about it. Beyond that, there was something in her confidence, a leadership quality that quietly asked for respect. She liked that in a person. Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot him. But I don't think he or anyone else in there is going to take me seriously unless I have it, Fata reassured her. The deputy unsnapped her holster and slid the 9mm SIG towards Fata. Please don't kill anyone with that, okay? Don't worry, I've used one before, and I know that the sight of a gun is almost as effective as the use of one, Fata said. Fata left Sadie to attend to the deputy's wounds and made her way into the lodge's main room. She could hear his voice even before fully entering the large, wood-beamed central space. Abel was holding court with the lodge's other guests, who gathered around him like children at story time. She was sure he was entertaining them with one of his fabricated stories, intended to engender trust and feelings of friendship. That was his M.O. Relationship building with small groups, some would eventually be victims, and the others who would reliably come to his defense with alibis to exonerate this affable man. Fata was sure she'd seen a micro-expression of hate cross his face as he saw her enter the room. Still conning the masses, Abel? You still think you have time to pull these folks into your little social circle? Maybe pick out a couple of them to kill in their sleep? and still be able to depend on the others to bail you out? Well, I don't think so, Fata said, leveling her pistol at him. The guest that had been sitting close to Abel now quickly moved away from him at the sight of her gun. Murmurs and rumblings rolled through them as they backed away, though none would take their eyes off of Fata. Ah, former Detective Munsing. How predictable of you to show up here. Don't you think these good people are frightened enough from the avalanche? Yet, you have to come in here with a gun and scare them even more. I believe that's why you were relieved from your position on the police force, if I recall correctly. Shut up, Abel. I don't know how you arranged it, but I know you're responsible not only for the avalanche, but also that runaway snowcat that crushed the sheriff's car. Of course, that's on top of the four murders in Boulder you committed last week. So stop your bullshit and put your hands where I can see them, Fata demanded. Oh, you don't know anything, Fata. Oh, may I call you that? Calling you Detective Munsing just seems so incorrect now, doesn't it? I think you're running on instincts and imagination, and those won't hold up in any court. Call me old-fashioned. But I think the justice system still likes to see actual evidence put before them. Mm, do you have some of that? That shouldn't concern you right now, Abel. The gun in my hand is what should concern you the most. I know you did everything I just said, and probably more, too. And I don't get the feeling you're new to this. I'm going to prove it beyond anyone's doubt. Oh, put that gun down. You're not going... The sound of the gun echoed in the high-ceilinged room, causing some of the people to scream as Fata took her shot. She'd seen just a flicker of movement in his legs, and she knew he was about to lunge at her. The bullet caught him just below his right shoulder, and should have knocked him backwards towards the fireplace. But he curled forward like someone punched in the stomach. Fata took two steps back, never lowering the gun from her target. Abel slowly raised his face towards her, showing her a huge grin and blood on his teeth. 
I didn't think you had it in you, Ms. Munsing. I stand corrected now, Abel said, dropping to his knees. Don't move any more. I'm serious, Abel, Fata shouted. The small group of witnesses were gathered tightly against the lodge's front windows, some in shock, others trying to figure out who was in the right at this odd confrontation. Someone said they thought an ambulance should be called, obviously forgetting that the access roads to the lodge were now inaccessible due to the avalanche. Well, I think I will call you Detective Munsing after all. Clearly, you're still on the case, no matter what your employment situation may currently be. I suppose once a detective, always a detective. But you'll have to do better than this, I fear. So keep on trusting those instincts, and maybe one day they will pay off, Abel said, starting to stand up. Don't do it, Abel. As he stood and quickly moved towards her, Fata fired five more times directly into his torso, this time sending him backwards onto the rug in front of the roaring fire. What she saw next would define the following decade of her life. As she stepped towards his body, she watched it melt into the round rag rug, like spilled water into a sponge. Her mind was trying to make sense of what she was seeing, but she could tell by the gasps and screams of the others that she wasn't the only one seeing it. Fata lowered the pistol towards the place on the rug where Abel had been, not sure what to do next. She glanced at the gathered people, trying to measure their terror level by the looks on their faces. Suddenly the rug curled up into an S-shape, like a cobra about to strike, and Abel's face appeared in it like he was pressing it through from the other side. Still holding that same sickening grin she'd seen just moments ago, it, or he, began to move towards her like a snake. Fata fired two more shots into the face of it, and it collapsed into a puddle of liquid on the hardwood floor. There were more screams coming from the group of shocked bystanders, as they all witnessed the pool of liquid slither across the floor and underneath a closed door that led through to the kitchen. Goodbye for now, Detective Munsing, but rest assured that we will definitely meet again in the near future. Maybe some of these fine people here will put in a good word or two for you, so you can get your old job back. Wouldn't that be splendid? I'd hate for you to be a simple vigilante when we next see each other, Abel said. Pato wasn't sure how he'd said that, or if she'd even heard it with her ears. Perhaps it was just inside her head. She would have to debate that later. For now, there were 12 very frightened people and a wounded sheriff's deputy that needed her immediate attention.